just give us a little insight. This past week and especially the past 24 hours has been a whirlwind. What, what's it been like? Well, the past week I have made more phone calls than I can shake a stick at. I mean, I, c I cannot believe how long I was on the phone Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yesterday, you know, um, tumultuous day, crazy and everything, but mixed emotions, you know, um, changing in the guard, but the last 24 hours has been a whirlwind and largely in a positive way. I have a completely new job, even though I'm still a state senator, and I can see the effect right away of what the responsibilities are and how your, the demands on your time radically change. But the, you know what? That's um, exhilarating as well. It's great for Long Island having you there as it was having Senator Skelos there, but you have a lot more on your plate now. You have an entire state that you got to look out for. I, I do, but you know, and obviously I'm proud to be a Long Island. I've I lived my whole life there. I'm proud to represent my district. And in whether it's me or anybody else, we're all parochial. Parochial, certainly on behalf of our district and on behalf of our region. But if you look at my record, if you look at what I say and where I say it, I don't talk about upstate and downstate. I, I do not do that. We, the needs in western New York and in the southern tier and the north country, people want good jobs. They want a great education for their kids. They want a break on their property taxes. So it doesn't really matter. I'll take a good example. Kathy Young represents some of the poorest counties in the country. And we have colleagues who have home values of, say, $100,000 or under, and yet their property taxes can be six or $7,000. On Long Island, you know, if you're paying ten dollars or $12,000, oftentimes your house is worth like $400,000. So the needs of Long Island are acute. Um, we do have higher employment, but that doesn't mean we don't have our needs and desires. But I, I will do everything conceivable to dispel this continued um, game of upstate and downstate. And you know, when you talk about downstate, ah, you're throwing in New York City, is it Westchester and Rockland and Orange? I, I am a state senator from the great state of New York, the Empire State. You have a couple thorny issues to deal with right away. Education, Common Core is the number one thing on a lot of people's minds. You were the education chair. In the next four, six weeks to, for the rest of session, do you see some changes? I do. And <clears throat> our members, after having come back from what was referred to as our break, they had a lot of feedback from their constituents. And whether it's on opt-out or the tests or the amount of testing, we took steps last year that I believe were helpful. We took steps this year that I believe are helpful. But, you know, when we did it, our members came back and said, good, but we have to make some improvements. Simple one. Public comment period on whatever the pros proposed changes may be. We now have legislation that will say, extend it out another 45 days. Do it in full conformance with existing law. And by the way, this public comment period is longer than any other public comment period because they are accepting comments before the regulations even come out. I've spoken with the department. They had thousands of comments already in hand, even though it just started two weeks ago, maybe three. Let's, let's talk about ethics. You're in the position you're in because the previous leader was arrested, your counterpart in the assembly, exact same boat. How do you both not get together right now and say, let's come up with the toughest ethics bill in the country and restore the people's faith in this government? And I, know, and I know you did pass something, but some good government groups say it's window dressing, for lack of a better phrase. Um, I don't they think won. it's window dressing. You know, if you, and I'll take, uh, take what the governor said. Now, I'm going to go back a couple of years because we made what was considered uh, transformative changes then. And you had the uh, initiation of JCOPE and a lot of changes in what was existing law. More disclosure then. More disclosure now. And we haven't even had the opportunity to see the full effect of the new law. So I think it's, while it is a clear and important issue, before we would just go along and say, we have to change it again, I think we have an obligation to see how it's going to work. So when we file our disclosure, for example, I have to file a disclosure this week, that's for business transacted last year. The new law is a year out. So I, I think we have to...
be cautious, be vigilant, but be cautious at the same time. How often have you spoken with Governor Cuomo since your uh, selection as majority leader? You know, shed some light on what your conversations have been. I had a very good conversation with him today. Uh, very cordial. He was uh, extraordinarily gracious, and we talked about some issues. He laid some things out, you know, in terms of what he thought needed to get done. And we also spoke about Sandra Lee. And, you know, I realize we're in a tough business. Uh, I realize that it's, it can be noble in many ways, but there's also a human side to this. And, you know, he's focusing his attention right now on someone who is extraordinarily important to him, which he should. I obviously wish Sandra Lee only the best. And he's going to be preoccupied. I know he's going to do his job, and I look forward to working with him. But we spoke this morning. We ended up missing each other last night. Had a very cordial conversation with Senator Hasty. I just came from a meeting with Senator Andrew Stewart Cousins. So, you know, is I'm going to find out quickly whether or not a 24-hour day <laughs> can actually be extended to 28 or 29 hours. So. You have a reputation of getting along well with a lot of people, all different factions, even people you disagree with. That's probably one of the reasons you're you're here where you are. Yeah, you know, Doug, I, I appreciate that, and, and I would like to think that I, I certainly have my detractors, and I know I had before and probably will have more now in some respects, but I don't, life is too short. I don't, I don't want to play games. Um, if I try very hard to be attentive, to be studious, and to be informed. Now, if I don't know something, I'm going to tell somebody I don't know. I'd rather give them that answer and come back. And I, I would, li let me say this. At the beginning and the end of the day, I want to have the respect of the people I work with. Now, people would assume, okay, your colleagues. I want the respect of the people who are doing all the other work, our staff, the people who are cleaning the buildings. And if I can have that, then I'm doing something right. Upstaters, some upstaters say you're not conservative enough. Some Long Islanders probably think you're too conservative. How do you describe John Flanagan politically? I do believe I am conservative. You know, I'm fiscally conservative. And I, I have said this at least a thousand times during my career. I believe the government has an obligation to provide resources and effective programs for the people of the state of New York. I also believe that the public is a lot smarter about how to spend their own money than their government is. And whether it's Monday or Friday, I don't care where you live, I want to make sure that you have money in your pocket. We obviously need to ask people for resources to run the government, but beyond that, we have to be extraordinarily judicious. And my, I believe I'm conservative. I, I'm sure there will be people, and I know there are people saying, I'm not conservative enough, and then there are those who say I'm too conservative. So the one thing I can say is um, I'm John Flanagan, and people will make that determination of who they think I am on their own. So those, those restaurant owners who are struggling, the deli owners, you know, the shopkeepers, the homeowners on Long Island, Buffalo, all over, you know, what is your, your message and your pledge to them in terms of what you're going to try to accomplish? I want them to feel that people are listening, that we're acting on their behalf. And you, let's talk about a deli owner, right? Now, in the state of New York, direct impact, yeah, probably to some degree, health department, things of that nature. I also think we have to work closely with counties, towns, villages, cities, small or otherwise, um, because what I hear from those people is they're getting beaten to death by regulations, fines, fees. You know, it's death by a thousand cuts. Um, so. We, we have to be very judicious in terms of how we approach those things. And some of it rests at the state level. I, I want them to feel that they have an ally in our conference, not John Flanagan, but in our conference in terms of what we advance on their behalf. And the f most important thing that we need to do in order to effectuate that is we have to listen to what they have to say.